This is Math 99, Section 9.3. I'm going to start, uh, we're just going to do part of 9.3 right now, and we're going to talk about um, matrix solutions, kind of a, a matrix as a tool for solving, for solving systems. So first off, I'm just going to write a system up here. Um, X plus Y equals negative 2, and 2X minus Y equals negative 10. And we'll, we'll solve that system. But before we solve that system, um, I want to introduce a new tool. And it's not going to be necessarily the most efficient way to solve this type of equation, uh, this type of system, but we're going to, uh, to use it anyways. And I just want to use this system to demonstrate it. So a matrix is just a collection of, um, numbers or elements. And um, it's, it's arranged in rows and columns. So it'll have, you know, so many rows, so many columns. And then there'll just be entries in here. So this matrix, um, notice that like this position, the first row, the third column is two. Position's important in here. Position has meaning. And this would be, um, I have so many rows and so many columns. The size of this matrix is a three by three. This is a three by three matrix. Um, I could do another matrix. And notice this would be three rows, two columns, a three by two. We we'll always do, do rows by columns. Um, I don't know if you remember the old Royal Crown, uh, RC Cola. Anyways, that's the thing that I always remember with matrices to remember what order things are going. So again, a matrix is just a, it's just a data structure. It's a way to hold some information. And um, we can talk about their size. So here's what um, one tool for these matrices is I can take this system and write it in terms of a matrix. And notice that like when we write systems, we basically have an X column and a Y column. So I'm going to do that. I basically have my X and my Y column. Now my, these, this X and this Y, these aren't really part of the system. Um, I'm just kind of labeling these and I have my solutions. And then all I'm going to do is just lift the coefficients out of here. So notice I have one X, one Y, and the solution's negative two in that first row, in that first equation. And here in the in the second equation, the second row, x is two, y is negative one, and the solution is negative ten. And then I basically have my equations that way. So my rows or equations, my columns, are um, x's or y's or solutions. And this is actually called an augmented matrix because the x y part has been augmented with a solution. But that is not vocabulary. I will ask you anything about. Well, here's what's great, I think, about matrices is, you know, when we go to solve this, like this, this two by two that's here, one thing that we could have done is just added these together and the Y's cancel out. So what the matrix allows us to do is do those row operations we've been doing and not have to write X and Y over and over again. It'll just collect a bunch of information. So I could cancel out the Y's. I'm just going to get in the habit of canceling out those X's. This ties back to three by threes. So I want, it, I want that to be a zero right there. So I think that what I will do then right now is this is a one, this is a two. So if I go uh, negative two, and instead of writing equation one, I'm gonna, just going to write row one. Equation two, uh, sorry, row one times negative two. Add that to row two. I'm going to put that back into the row two spot. So if I do that, notice row one doesn't change. And uh, do a little scratch calculation. Negative two times row one, that makes us a negative two, a negative two, and a positive four. Doing all the operations that I did before, just I'm not rewriting X and Y all the time. Negative two plus two is zero. Negative uh, two plus negative one is negative three. Four plus negative 10 is negative six. I've got that. And then now, like from here, notice if I write this back as a system again, it would be my x plus y equals negative 2. And now I have 0x minus 3y equals negative 6. I can back solve from here, which is great. So I can use the system for it. And again, 
not necessarily the most effective on a two by two, but it's a good, good way to go about it. Um, it's a good, actually, this, what I mean is this is a good tool to learn how to use matrices. Now I could go a little bit further, you know, like eventually I'm going to want this to be a one Y. So one thing I could do is that negative three, I could take negative one third of, of row two and put it back into row two. So if I do that, row one's the same. And if I take negative one third of this, notice divide by negative three, that makes this one. Divide by negative three, that makes that two. I can tell right away that y is two. And I could back solve, plug it back into here and go from there. So that's, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, let me show you something on the calculator. So the calculator actually, We'll do matrices. If you look up on the board here, above the x to the negative 1, it's a matrix. So if I hit second and then that button, I get the matrix menu. And so these are all names of matrices. And what I'm going to do is scroll over to edit, and I'm going to edit matrix A. Now the matrix that I, that I use to solve this problem, notice the size of it. It's a 2 by 3. So... I need this matrix to be a, uh, a, a two by three. And it changes the size. And I'm just gonna enter in what that matrix is. Let's see, it was one, one, negative two. And then it was two, negative one, negative 10. And if I go quit, now if I go back into the matrix menu, and just pull up the name A, it'll show me that. Now, um, using that calculator is gonna be advantage. I'll show you why it's advantageous to us. Um, so I, move, I work this down to here, and notice that like right off here, this is my Y column. So I have one Y, and my solution column is two. So I know right off the bat that Y is two. And I also have, I can do a little back solving now, because this equation is x, 1x plus 1y equals negative 2. I can plug the 2 back in. x uh, plus 2 equals negative 2. Subtract 2. x must equal negative 4. Now, here's, uh, again, with a 2 by 2, it doesn't feel like it does much for us. It doesn't feel very advantageous. But... I want to keep going with this matrix. I had this 1, 1, negative 2, 0, 1, 2. Now, this is in what's called a row echelon form. And what that means is um, the rows are in line. And I have a 0 here. If it was a 3 by 3, it would look like this. I would have a little row of zeros down in the corner like this. What's nice about when a matrix is in this form, it's it's easy to solve, you know, because I have some solution model, um, some solutions over here. I'd notice right away that z is three, and I could back solve to get y, back solve to get x. So you don't have to do this, but I want to take this a little further, and I want to get it into what's called a reduced row echelon form. And this is why I'm showing you the calculator. So reduced row echelon form has zeros here, but I also manipulated it so it's all zeros here. So it's just ones down the main column and then zeros on either side of it. So what, in order to get this into reduced row echelon form, what I want to do now is get this to be a zero as well. Now, we've already solved it. If you're solving this by hand, you're done. I mean, you get your solution. This is This is sometimes more work than it's worth, but again, I want to show you something in the calculator. Um, so if I want to get rid of this one, I can use this one to do it. And the way that I'll do it is I'll go um, negative 1 times row 2 plus row 1. I'm going to put that into row 1. So notice if I negate everything in row 2, I get that. And if I add it to row 1, 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. And then the second row I'll keep uh, just as it was. 
Now, when we go to interpret this, notice these are x's, these are y's. These are solutions. This is my equation one, this is my equation two. Notice what this says. This first row says one x plus zero y's equals negative four. It tells me the answer right away. One y plus zero x's equals two. So I can read my actual solution. If I'm in this form where I have just ones along the diagonal and zeros on the other side, x is negative four, y is two. Again, that's reduced row echelon form. In your calculator, it's abbreviated like this, R-R-E-F. Let me go back to the calculator. And I have that matrix A. And now what I'm gonna do is I will um, go into the matrix menu. And I'm gonna go over to where it says math. This is a list of math. Um, operations I can do on this. I'm just going to scroll down until I get RREF, reduced row echelon form. Now if I hit enter, this brings the command back to the back to the main page. Now I need to give it the name. I need to tell it what I want it to do reduced row echelon form on. So I'm going to go back into the matrix menu and grab that A name. Great. So then now if I hit enter, it'll execute, it'll say find reduced row echelon form of matrix A. There's my answer. I can read my answer right off of it right here. X is negative four, Y is two. So I can use my calculator to check my solution. And that's how I'd like you to use it. All right, so let's use some matrices to do um, a couple more systems. So let's take something like uh, this. And first off, let me write it as a matrix. So as I write this as a matrix, I'm just gonna pull off the um, coefficients. So I have 2x, negative 1y, and 4 in my solution. I have 1x, 3y, and 9 in my solution. And so again, my strategy is to get this to be a 0, and then maybe maybe go from there, do some back solving. So um, if I were to go negative 2 times row 2 and add it to row 1, that would make that a 0. I'm going to put that into row 2. So let's see, negative two times row two, that makes this a negative two, that makes this a negative six, that makes this a negative 18. So my first row is gonna stay as it is. My second row is gonna change though, that becomes a zero. This becomes a negative seven. And four minus 18 or plus negative 18 is a negative 14. So great, I'm there from, the, I'm, I'm good from there. Um, notice now this is a negative seven y equals negative 14 and 2x minus y equals four. So I can back solve here to get that y value divided by negative seven. Looks like y must be two, and if y is two, I can substitute it into here. 2x minus two equals four. I add two to both sides. 2x equals six, so x is three. I can write this way, I can write as the ordered pair three, two. Let me check it on the calculator. So I'm going to go back into that, that matrix menu. And I'm going to edit that matrix A. And it's already 2 by 3, so I'm good on that. And let's see, what was my matrix? Uh, it was 2, negative 1, negative, I say, 4. And then one three nine. One three nine. And I always just like to take a look at the matrix again. Make sure that's it. Yeah, that's it. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna reduce row echelon form that thing again. So I go into the matrix menu, go over to math, and I like to go from the bottom of the menu just because it's closer to there. So I, I get to it. Remember, I have to hit enter, hit enter to bring it back. I have to go back into the matrix menu and choose which matrix I want to do it to. And I get 3, 2. That's the answer I got. Great. So I know that I'm right. Let's do another example. Something like that. And uh, I'm going to lift it out, write it as a matrix. So I'm just lifting out the coefficients. 3x's, negative 6y's, and a 3 negative two x's, three y's, and a negative four. And again, I'm gonna make that a zero. So, ways that I could do that. 
let's see, if I went uh, two times row one and I added it to three times row two, I would make this a six and this a negative six. So that would get rid of them. So let me do a little scratch above them. So if I multiply all these by two, that would be six, negative 12, six. And if I multiply all these by three, uh, that would be negative six, nine, negative 12. All right, my first row is not gonna change. My second row is the combination of these. So six plus negative six is zero. Negative 12 plus nine, negative three. Uh, six minus 12 is negative six. Great, and from here then, this line is telling me that negative three y is equal to negative six. So divide by negative three, looks like y must be two. This line is telling me 3x minus 6y equals 3. So let me plug that 2 into here. So 3x minus 6 times 2 equals 3. 3x minus 12 is 3. Add 12. 3x is 15. So it looks like x must be 5. I can write my answer like this, or I can write it as the ordered pair 5, 2. Let me check this on the calculator. So I'm going to go back and, and edit that matrix, scroll over to edit and pick it. The size is good, two by three. Now let's see, my matrix was uh, three, negative six, three. And again, I'm just taking those coefficients, negative two, three, negative four. And I'm going to go quit to go back to the main screen. Again, I like to check, make sure that I got my matrix right. Looks like it to me. So I'm going to reduce row echelon format. Back into the matrix menu. Go over to math. Reduce row echelon form of A. 5, 2. That's the answer I got. So, yay matrices. So let's do another, a couple more examples. 3x minus 7y equals 36. And uh, 5x minus 4y equals 14. All right, so first I'm going to rewrite this as a matrix. So pull out those coefficients 3, negative 7, 36, 5, negative 4, 14. And now I want to make a zero here. So I think what I'm going to do is multiply this one by negative 5 and multiply this one by 3 and a 15. So a negative 5 times row one plus three times row two, that's gonna go into the row two spot. So negative five times row one, that's a negative 15, a 35, and a negative 180. Three times row two, that makes that a 15, good, those will cancel. Negative 12, and then let's see, 14 times three, 42, yeah, positive 42. So my first row is not affected. My second one, negative 15 plus 15 is zero. Wanted that to happen. 35 minus 12 is 23. And then um, negative 180 plus 42, negative 138. So notice that this then is 23y equals negative 138. If I divide both sides by 23, looks like y equals six. And if y equals 6, I can plug it back into this one. 3x minus 7 times 6 is y equals 36. So this would be 3x minus 42 equals 36. Add that 42 to both sides. 3x equals 78. Divide by 3. Looks like x is 26. So I could write it that way, I could write it as the ordered pair 26, 6. Let me check that on my calculator. I'm going to edit it. Whoops. Not what I want to do. I'm going to edit it. And it was 3, negative 7, 36. 5, negative 4. 14. Let me check it, make sure that I did it right. 
just like I did. All right, so let me reduce row echelon form that thing. Ooh, and I got different answers, negative six and negative two. Interesting, so how does that help me? Then I can go back at my work and maybe notice what went wrong. And ah, I see it right here. So this was a negative 38 over 23, and I said that was a positive six. So that's actually a negative six. So see how using the calculator can help you trace back. You don't have to start the whole problem over and kind of see where there was some sort of mistake. So if that's a negative six, that makes this negative seven times negative six. That makes this a plus 36 minus 42 is negative six. So divide by six, it looks like X then would equal negative two. Is that what we got? It is. Yeah, so check your answers on that calculator because you can, um, like me, make mistakes. Hey, I'm gonna throw two different ones in my calculator and just kind of interpret the result. And the system would be something like, um, 2x plus 4y equals 7, and then um, 1x, I'll say plus 2y equals 9. So notice that this would be like 2x plus 4y equals 7, x plus 2y equals 9. And I could go through all my work, and I would get my answer and interpret it. So I do want you to do the work, but I just want to interpret this answer that the calculator gives me in this case. Notice that I have this, 120001. This is interesting. This is saying 0x plus 0y, so this side equals 0, equals 1. And we know from our work before that that's impossible, so there's no solution. These two lines never cross. Okay, let me do, uh, let me do another one then. And again, I would have something like a 3x negative 6y equals 12. And then the next equation would be negative x uh, plus 2y equals negative 4. So again, 3x minus 6y equals 12. Negative x plus 2y equals negative 4. There it is again, just in case you didn't see it the first time. Um, and if I reduce row echelon form that, now I get this. So check that one out. This row is still interesting. 0x, 0y, 0 equals 0. That's something that's true, so this would be infinite solutions. And again, I want you to do it by hand. Just use the calculator to check. Um, the real power of this will come out of the next time when we're doing 3x3 three three matrices.